Greetings everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in TNO The Last Days of Europe. Now normally, I show you me selecting the country I'm playing and stuff like that, but honestly the mod took so long to load that I decided, you know what, screw it, I'm not going to do it. So if you want to read about the Komi Republic, go right ahead. But as I just said, we're playing as Komi, and we are going down a certain path which, as you can tell probably from the thumbnail, as well as the title of this video and this campaign, we're going to go down a very fun path that maybe in which we can resurrect maybe a monarchy. Maybe, maybe not. So, we'll see what happens. I'm also just letting everyone see if they want to read about the state of the Komi Republic, as well as players of the game, as well as the center, a Nikolai dude, Alexei, as well as Stalina. Cool, for the Republic. Let's begin. So... The minutes are minutes of Congress. Yet another year has passed and our coalition's Congress has managed to run the Republic as well as they can given our unfortunate situation. However, the cracks are beginning to show and factionalism within the Republic and even our own coalition is growing at an incredible rate. If we were to continue our custody custodianship of Comey and prevent the radicals from taking power, we must act quickly and decisively to put our enemies down. Absolutely, we have two research slots. Ah, oh, 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 this is not, this is not a world blues. No, 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 no. This is TNO. I love it. Actually, let's let's start off with some research speed, which is we're kind of behind in terms of improved computing machines. Ooh, and industry is always good to grab. Civilian construction too. Good. Three military factories. What do we want to build? Guns, probably. Artillery, yes. Early artillery and well, truth be told, we're actually using IFVs with our starter divisions. So I almost never use IFVs, but they do have their uses in terms of speed. Now I know this campaign is probably not going to be super easy with the way we want to go, but you know what? That's okay. You have infantry. Ooh, infantry expert. Not bad. Free civilian factories. Just build up some more civilian factories if we can. Boom, boom. And let us begin. Because we want to start off as fast as we can, because TNO, well, sometimes takes very long to load or process through. But that's okay. Ivan, you shall lead, as well as you. Aug Augustin Vernkovsky. Pretty good. How long is our focus? 28 days. Oh my goodness. At least it's not a 70-day focus. Now, we're making some of these stuff. We are literally starting from scratch, but we have the custodium. The workday of Nikolai Voznesensky Vosnes or Nesensky, passed in an unbearable, soul-crushing, yet in no way carefree routine. Only having reached the threshold of the presidential residence with his leisurely step, the president was immediately caught in the intrigues and schemes of the commune politics, dealing with the chaos that engulfed the newborn republic, the chaos to which he no less than the radicals he despised. In a short moment of distraction, Vosnesensky could not help but indulge himself in the reminiscences about the early days of the Republic, the time when everything seemed so easy, so achievable. The applauding crowd in the speech hall, the lowered Soviet flag, the cheering demonstrations for the new era and the Russian democracy, it looked so vivid and yet so dissonant with his new reality. The idealistic memories of the birth of the Republic were darkened by images of the... Zidanov, a Janus face and smug creature accompanied by Sislov, the Mesistopheles and Flesh, all sitting next to him on the round table and waiting for the share in the newly founded state. He held nothing but contempt for them, but even being charitable to his past actions, he was honest at least to himself about his own role in enabling the communists in the corruption of the young democracy. Perhaps all of it could be done differently. The Republic didn't have to surrender to the communist demands in exchange for the false sense of security. It didn't have to be a welcoming haven for the pitiful scum who found no place for themselves but an Whether what whether what could be done, it is much too late. The past was a past. All that mattered was that Mr. V had to carry his inevitable burden alone, clumsily maneuvering in the web that enveloped Comey. The sound of gunfire behind the window helped to sober his reflection, sighing in response to the habitual barbarity he grew used to a long time ago. President V took a folder in the bosom and put on his coat. Leaving the residence, he took a long way to his house, to the opposite side of the road, where another, another street fight occurred. It is still worth it. It has to be worth it. Oh, I love TNO so much. The Siktivkar... Siktivkar Arsenal. Siktivkar. Which is a capital, I think. Yep, it is a capital of ours. And actually, when I was researching Comey... It actually really exists in real, obviously, in our timeline. And if you're really wondering, the background of the thumbnail is actually, one of, I think, the flag for the modern-day Komi Republic or something like that. So, the Peacemaker. The meeting was mostly going as planned. Alexei Kosygin was discussing various topics with several of the more right-wing members of the Democratic Coalition. The discussions to future cabinet positions went fine, with Kosygin mostly satisfied with the various compromises made. 
He'd managed to squeeze in a few more candidates from his own party, the Union of Young Reformers. He discussed upcoming campaign strategies, which seeing districts would have more or less funding from which parties, and working to discuss ways to penetrate some of the more radical districts. However, Mr. K was not surprised when the mention of political radicals derailed the meeting. These goddamn communists are going to tear down all the progress we've made in the name of the so-called People's Revolution. Popular ma booty. The Democratic Coalition is the only thing keeping Comey from falling to wannabe despots, exclaimed one politician, and it seemed many of those present agreed with him. He continued on, and what is Ms. President V doing, huh? He's cuddling with them. The DSNP are destroying this coalition, and I won't stand for it. This could get out of hand. A fracture in the coalition could seriously damage the performance in the elections, allowing the radicals to gain power. Kalsajun has to do something. Friends, colleagues, I understand your fears. Truly, I do. I am myself wary of President V's weak stance towards extremism. However, endangering the coalition's unity is not what the Republic needs. We must instead look at our alternative, Kalsajun paused briefly. Vosnesensky has led a republic for some time, and Comey has grown considerably under his leadership, despite the bombings. However, Comey, I feel, may need some new, in new may need someone new in charge, someone they can truly heal Comey of its most infectious disease. Elections are soon friends, and we may stand for democracy, do we not? Kosojin had been thinking about the elections a lot recently, and the idea of becoming president was becoming more and more seductive. Either way, it seems his colleagues were pleased by his, li by his little speech, and it seems a disaster has been averted for now. If we wish to see the sun, we must weather the coming storm. Which we got a lot of options here. A friend on the left. So, the president and Andrew Zidanov, the president of the republic and a high-ranking communist official, nominal enemies and close friends, both have maintained close personal relationships even throughout the current state of political crisis, allowing for certain actions to be taken across political lines. This, of course, has is off the record, and the release of these ties could be incredibly dangerous for the state of the republic. Zidanov may currently call up eight favors. Now, normally we don't want to do that, but we have the Defender, which we'll talk about. We have the Power Struggle, so we want to empower the right because we want a certain Sergei Taboretsky to be leading the charge, we'll say, which we had to suppress to the left. So we will do that soon. We get reunification of Russia. We can scavenge for loot, which I want to do, but we're not going to do that first. Oh, we need to prepare a raid, too. Oh, ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay. Order of St. George, hello there. We're going to beat you up because you have no content right now. Right? Am I correct? Hold up, St. George, you have no content, which is good enough for us to beat you up. We can do some of this, we can purchase equipment, but we are good to defend us. Svetlana Stalin looked down at the shuffled papers on her desk as the lights flickered once more. She barely noticed and said, running a finger along a neatly written note on one of the margins, Future mayoral candidate, it said, next to a grainy photo of a smiling woman. She nodded to herself. She would be perfect. Another name went down on the list she was assembling. Another person to contact, to fund, to al and align. One more, the endless list of personnel that the governing coalition employed to keep the Republic running. A thought flickered in her, through her mind. An image of her combined proposals for the appointments. What a government would that be? Free of radicals and subverses. Free of corruption and dedicated to the Republic over all else. Men and women who knew, above all, that there was a greater good to work towards. As she placed the list to the side and looked absently at the now cold cup of tea that was sitting forgotten on the other side of her desk, she wondered just how her personal path had ended here. Her transformation from the young decadent party goer that she resented so much to the dedicated public servant. It did not matter, she decided. It was merely a matter for her record, to be consigned to a distant memory. As always, in personal development politics, the true important thing to think about was the ends, and now the future. It will all pay off someday. But maybe not for her, because what we're going to do is uh, a couple fun, fun things. Radio Free Sectificar Show 317. And that concludes our segment on the night's expected weather and sightings of German planes. Now, on to the latest in no local news. On to you, Sergei. Thanks, Igor, for all of you just turn tuning in now. This is Radio Free Sectificar with all of the Republic's latest news. First on the agenda, we have a scandal involving none other than the president himself, President Wolznesinski or Sky, was allegedly seen with an unknown young woman entering his apartment and leaving two hours later. And will this tie into the last scandal, or should it be counted as its own thing? Well, as much as I hate to say it, Igor, this is yet another scandal for the president, one with perhaps the potential to be counted among the ranks of Zidanev affair. Do remind the listeners, Sergei, well, that was a time a few weeks ago when allegations surfaced of collusion between the president and the far left through the channel of Andrei Zidanev, chairman of the Communist Party, at least in name. We all know who's really in charge, and this one has potential for sure, which we can explain after the break. Remember, this show is brought to you today by the Internationalania Street Cinema, the best viewing in town, onto the music. Nothing but another right-wing propaganda parrot, 
Quality reporting from a quality station. Yes, let's decrease the power of the center because the center means nothing. The left means nothing. What we want in this campaign is nothing but a bunch of, I guess, right-wing people. Yeah. Led by Gomelyov and Taborizky. Oh, no. An assassin strikes at Hitler. Say it's not so. I wonder who's behind it. Hmm. Odenstadt. The Paragon. The door swung smoothly to the side as... Anatoly crept into the house, slowly letting out a terrified breath. Clutching the pistol at his side, he advanced down the hall, ignoring the quiet shadow of the bodyguards in the other rooms. They wouldn't dare disturb their master while he slept. He hoped, prayed, even. As he reached the last door, a plain wooden thing and wrapped his shaking hand around the knob. Anatoly felt a small smile creep onto his face. This was much easier than expected, wasn't it? All he had to do was shoot an old sleeping man in the head and we'd be done. The Republic would be free of a devil. Anatoly entered the small bedroom, squinting in the dark as he raised his pistol at the dark mass on the bed. The first shot, Anatoly in the hand, the next in the knee. He squealed in pain as he snapped his gaze towards a darkened corner. The shots had come from nausea rocking his stomach as he met the gaze of his target sitting comfortably on a leather chair. Come now, Mikhail Suslov intoned, barely above a whisper. Surely you didn't think no one's ever attempted to kill me before? Anatoly opened his mouth to speak to jeer the famed Shadow Master of Komi. All that exited his throat was a whimper. Suslov shook his head. A shame. Usually, Gumilev's lambs are made of sterner stuff. And he pulled the trigger again, and Anatoly saw no more. Suslov stood from his chair, sliding the still smoking pistol back into his jacket, gaze fixed on his bodyguard as he burst into the room. Leave him on the steps of the National Assembly. Gumilov hasn't gotten the message yet, it seems. Perhaps another demonstration is in order. Wow, that looks... That was... Whew. God, I love these events in TNO. Man, the, the devs are watching. You, I love the, what the devs are doing. Just keep it up. The minutes or the minutes of the Congress. The affairs of the National Assembly looks pretty good. Let's do that one because we get more political power. Because I want to use political power as soon as possible. As much as our detractors enjoy condemning our Republic for its excess of political intrigue and the occasional bout of violence, there's more to Comey than scheming and intriguing. The policies of the National Assembly, while bitterly contested as all things are, are a critical element of the thousands of people who are affected by the government's machinations each year. Opening the National Assembly for the year, appointing new party whips, and ensuring that everything functions as normal shall ensure that the functions of the Republic's institutions are as strong as ever. Additionally, this will give us the opportunity to cut through precedent and tradition, changing long-standing laws and improving life for the multitudes of citizens of the Republic. Through the tact tactful ex exercise of state power backed by the people, anything becomes possible. And now, finally, we have 71 political power, and we can pause the game. Now, the reason why I did not scan for loot yet... Actually, can we beat people up? Yes, we can. But we need more command power. That sucks. Is because I want to do this. You see the front on the left? I don't want to do any of this because it empowers, like, libertarian socialism, which is we, what we, the path we don't want to do in this campaign. But there is one thing that I really like about this. Because even though we can hasten army recruitment, which is not bad, actually, we're going to get public support public houses, which raises our poverty rate, which will come in handy much later on once we've united Western Russia and we become a regional power. So I always choose that one just because poverty rate, if you can improve that, that is so good. It was also recommended uh, a few weeks before I record this, or a few days, that I should focus on army professionalism. Uh, I've been recommended that. I'm not sure what that does, except, you know, makes our army better. But in the long run, we'll see what happens. Let's scavenge for loot. And suppress the left. Awesome. And, hey, we're out of political power, but that's okay. That's totally okay. And 7,000 manpower. Not bad. Not bad. Let's see, we've got two divisions. So in this campaign, this guy's this is not too bad. And the visionary. That that was a top division, top infantry division, I should really say. Because we have two different types of infantry divisions. We have that one, as well as we have this one, which is 15 combat width. Which has quite a bit more support equipment. So I'm actually going to choose this one first. Because where we're going, we're going to need a lot of divisions. We're surrounded by the Western Russian Revolutionary Front, as well as Vyatka and Vologda. So we got to keep an eye on what they're doing. The visionary. The winds blew cold through the Komi night as a shadow tramped through the field. The snow crunched between, beneath his feet until he reached the ideal spot. The night was clear and silent, perfect for a serapitutuous observations. He placed a long case in the field, withdrawing the tripod, deftly expanding it, and attaching the telescope to the top. His nighttime adventures were at risk, of course. Suslov had expressed concern for his safety and fearing assassination attempts from the passionary. But even if Comrade Suslov's men did not know of his excursions, how dangerous could it be? Glancing into the telescope, Andrei Zdanov's mind wandered, far away from the lights of Syaktivkar. That snake pit of intrigue and violence, he found serenity in the gentle movement of the stars. Perhaps out there he lay hope. Other beings who overcame their petty infighting and defeated their worst qualities, an example for humanity to follow into a new age. Freedom from want, freedom from conflict, and freedom from ignorance lay within the grasp of humanity. It was such a shame. 
that it had been squandered for so long on the petty conflicts of the last decade and the great battle with the backwards, regressive Germany. But soon the time would come. His vision would guide Russia and the world into a brave new era, and mankind would be free. The way forward lies in our hands. Actually, before I go on, if you if you live there or if you know how to pronounce this, how do I pronounce Siktivkar? Is that how you pronounce it? That's probably not how you pronounce it. I'm an American. We, I don't know how to pronounce a whole bunch of stuff, but... And Speer has been named a successor. A new dawn for the Reich. Good luck, Reich. We're all going to need it in the end. Get 0.85 political power today. We're halfway done with the focus, which gets more political power. Nice! Because with political power, I can raise or secure control, which means we can get more stability. And the Sika, Svetlana Volkharina, smud cordially for the fifth time with the fifth representative. Shook his hand, promised a bright future working together, and stepped away for the fifth time. They never asked her anything about herself, she noticed. Only her father. Your father would be so proud. They'd say... If only he could see you now. To which she smiled and agreed, promising to follow in dear old Nikolai's footsteps. She wasn't so ignorant. This meeting was a productive one, though. Not for the reasons the rest of the Communist Party thought. It wasn't a mere get-together for her. No, this was a valuable opportunity to learn the true threats in Comey were. And more importantly, how they would be taken down. The old man who had just spoken to her, she noticed with some grim satisfaction, was a coward. The second she disagreed with him on a minor dispute, he backed down and apologized thoroughly. Someone like that was a follower, not a leader. Serov had watched her carefully, as expected. A fearsome man, for sure, but he hasn't considered that his prey would be watching him just as carefully. What she took the most interest in was a man's apparent disregard for the common communist theory. The way he spoke reminded Svetlana of what little Nazi propaganda she had suffered throughout her past. The party was nearing a breaking point, she concluded at the end of the night. Zadanov and Soslav, for all their attempts to enforce unity, could not control everyone. Serov would be the first to go, she reasoned, but certainly not the last. A new rising star in the party would be a welcome sight for many, a reassurance that the glory days of the Union were not all lost. Svetlana Bukharina would be that, uh, but unlike her dear father, she wouldn't let Russia slip through her fingers. A new player enters the game. Actually, Serov. Is that like Sinister Serov from Equestriate War? When you play as... Oh, what was the nation's name? I can't remember. The ponies. The communist ponies. Oh, I can't remember what the ponies name right next to Equestria. Sinister Serov. I guess Serov's a real guy? Huh. I can't remember, but another late night in Siktivkar. Yuri Andropov sighed as he lazily tapped the butt of his cigarette against the ashtray, watching with no real interest as ashes drifted to the bottom of the small glass container. Yet another late night at the office. The light patter of rain against the window drew his eyes to the dark, muggy streets of Siktivkar outside. It rose to his feet and brought the cigarette to his lips as he surveyed the city. It was quite a night too quiet for his tastes. Sometimes, young members of the Communist Party whispering in each other's ears without a care in the world would comment on Mikhail Suslov's secrecy, his paranoia. The party was a safe place, they'd whine. They were all comrades there, right? Perhaps he could just loosen up a little bit. Usually they'd shut up or shut up when Yuri tapped them on the shoulder and asked them if they wanted to share their opinions with the, with the class. Then they'd know who the real shadow of the party was. Andropov snickered at the memory and shook his head. His job wasn't all just scaring dumb kids. It was to do whatever needed to be done to ensure party stability or to disappear whoever had earned Soslov's ire. The latest list of names to investigate Mikhail had given him was, all things considered, god dang boring for the most part. One name, however, caught his attention. Svetlana Bukharina. He had met the kid a few times, he remembered. Blowing some smoke out onto the window, she spoke like Yuri imagined a pr princess would. All prim and proper smiled as she shook his hand in the works. It's how he knew she was dangerous. Her father was like that too, a wonderful man if you were on his good side. But there was a venom behind the eyes. And he saw that behind hers too. As Yuri watched, a bolt of lightning lit up the city. For a moment, it almost seemed like it was on fire. He wondered then if it was a sign of what Svetlana could do. He shook his head and tossed a cigarette into the ashtray. Just another threat, or an unexpected ally. Cool. I love the news. Sometimes. The affairs of the National Assembly. Actually, if I remember correctly, if you don't have to actually go down this path at all. We can just go all the way down to the interlude and not do this, I think. But let's do the last year of the Volznesensi. A ruling coalition is headed by the most left-wing democratic faction, the Volznesensi, under Nikolai Vols... Voznesinsky. Under the guidance, Komi has seen significant improvement, rebuilding from the bombs, lowering the death toll, and attracting refugees to our towns and cities. However, all's not quite well. Voznesinsky's ties to the far left, specifically Andrei Zdanov, are quite alarming and a source of constant discomfort among the more conservative members of the coalition. Time will only tell the Vozen Voznesinsky will be able to keep their position at the head of the party, or another wing will take their place, which we unfortunately lose political power, but we have the Trailblazer. Ivan Serov watched the streets of Komi from his apartment, a frown creasing his face as he watched the sheep mill about below. He hadn't slept one weeks, and so he had developed the hess habit of watching the city below, pondering his existence. He was a socialist, he reasoned always among the most loyal in the entirety of the NKVD, so why did he have so many doubts of light? 
He was always proud of Russia, nationalistically even so, but surely that was merely because of their former status as a great socialist power. And certainly not in the same way as the Italians or even the Germans, he shook his head no. He was better than them, wasn't he? But why shouldn't he be devoted... But why shouldn't one be devoted to their home above all else? Perhaps a union wouldn't have fallen if they had fought with the same brutal pride that the Nazis did. Sirov felt a churning of doubt within his gut, one that had only intensified over the past few weeks. Perhaps he wasn't wrong, maybe, just maybe. It was Suslov and Zadanov who were misguided about such questions. Maybe Sirov could teach him teach them his new ideas. A smile crossed his face as he considered for the first time in what seemed like years the churning of his guts in his guts lessened. He would lead the Communist Party and call me with it to greatness. He stormed to the desk, placed a fresh sheet of paper onto his typewriter, and began. With this he would change socialism forever. An innovator or a madman? A trailblazer truly. Suppress it right. Ah, we good. Because the DSNP, the PSD, and SMR. So the DSNP is social democracy. Uh, SMR is liberal democracy. And uh, SL... The SL, so we got two for socialisms. Uh, national socialisms, we got ultra nationalisms, we got fascisms, and we got despotisms, which we probably want to go with. And the PSD is authoritarian democracy. Oh, Svetlana Stalina. Authoritarian democracy. I didn't think that. Hmm. I thought that'd be a little more Stalinist, but whatever. Cool. So, he may be able to call up the 30 favors. We could do stuff here, but we could get a general, a little more army XP gain, request insider information. Hasten army recruitment, which I don't want to get any more manpower right now, because actually that could probably be pretty good. But we have the Crusader. Actually, discourage military violence. We get more stability, which I kind of like. But regardless, the speakers atop the stage smiled warmly at his audience. They had been so literally, so unreceptive when he was first introduced. Uranianism had never quite caught on in the Republic of Komi apart from his own in his own clique. It wasn't that he or his ideals were an unknown quantity in the Republic, quite the opposite. His infamy was likely the reason that evening of lectures had been boycotted by Komi's leftists and Democrats, and yet, despite everything, he still stood facing a packed theater, one of those conspicuously devoid of hecklers. Often, he said, moving into the end of his lecture, I am thus interrogated. Lev Nikolaevich, you call yourself a rightist, yet you advocate against the very, very, very things that all true rightists stand for. You do not stand for the church, for the supremacy of Russia, for the glory of the Tsars. What then can you possibly offer the people of Russia? The audience remained silent, but it was a silence of rapt attention. The speaker continued, people sick of TV car. Why? People of Siktivkar, you have heard me speak at length tonight of concepts that I do not expect any of you to grasp. Eurasia, passionarity, the will to change. You came here expecting to hear an alternative to the corrupt and inefficient democracy imposed upon us. I will confess that I am more comfortable explaining myself through the written word. But for the benefit of those not similarly inclined, let me elucidate my message as clearly as I can to you. The room remained silent and the speaker knew he had them. I envision a power to eclipse any that has precedented it. A continent-spanning project wherein the greatest strains of the motherland's ethnicities are forged into an indivisible whole, capitulating only to the singular authority of the state. Not a weary old empire, not where a single ethnos seizes power, only to stagnate and fall before a mightier foe, but a supra-national entity, the summation of all that has come before it. It will not merely be the Russians and their strengths, but the Ukrainians, the Kazakhs, the Mongols, the Buryats, and so many more. All of us, inheritors of a combined legacy, standing together under a single banner, the Eurasian state. As the audience exploded into applause, that was more than merely respectful. Someone leaned over to his friend and asked innocently, B -b Bafel, what was that guy's name again? Gumilov. Lev Nikolaevich Gumilov. Cool. And can we... Oh, they have loot. Do we not have enough divisions to do this? Oh, they don't have loot. Oh, we gotta do it against Volgod... Vologda. Vologda. Well, we might not win, but we do this IFV, which was okay. New friends. Which does have a little bit of armor, which should do okay for us. So, Sasha, still looking for her old friends, continued through the woods. She was still having some difficulty hearing from one of her remaining ears, and they were still severe enough that she had not caught any prey. Hunger was building. Looking... For a safe place to rest for a moment, Sasha found it under the arms of a pine tree. It was only once there that she realized that she was not alone. Across from her, she could see two men crouched over a deer trail. We won't find anything to eat if this keeps up, you know. She heard one of them, an older man with a deep voice, say, Shut up, the other young, young one replied. I told you, I'm no tracker, I'm a farm... He suddenly stopped speaking as he saw Sasha out of the corners of his eye and suddenly stood. She met his eyes and saw no malice in them. For a long moment, the young man reached into his pocket, withdrawing several strips of cured meat from which he threw in front of her. Feeling her hunger, Sasha moved to devour them before... Years of rigid training stopped her in her tracks. Look at that, Pavel, the old man said. A trained dog! He laughed as he approached her, the sound reminding her of better times. Caressing her neck, he directed her towards the trail, picking up and offering the jerky to her as he did. She quickly ate whatever was offered and knew what to do next, sniffing the deer trail and looking in the direction of the smell. See, Pavel, the old man exclaimed, a trekking dog. Lead on! At the command, Sasha 
cantered into the forest, the humans following behind. She might not have found her old friends, but she had at least found new ones. And that was enough to make her happy again. Every dog goes to heaven. Oh, look at that doggy. Look at that doggy. Oh, man, that doggy. Oh. God, I love the writing of this. Ah. Secure control. Nice. Because political campaign, I didn't realize, it gives you, if you do both of these at the same time, you actually get 0.3 political power for quite a while, which is not bad. Kind of like that. Ooh, let's go and prepare that. The organizer, Igor Shafarovich, looked at the window as the sun slowly crept into the room. An uninvited intruder. Candlelight spilled over to his drafting table as its glow lost luster. Sharav... Shaverovich puffed his lips to blow it out, then stopped. Now was not the time for that. Now when his approaching completion, he looked, he took up his pencil and leaned closer to the drawing board. This particular street was difficult to optimize, and it might be better to remove it entirely. He raised their hand, he wiped it off the map much better. He adjusted his glasses, discarding his pencil for a pen. He took a step back, seeing his work in its entirety for the first time since last night. To Shaverovich. Shaverovich. It was beautiful. Ordered roads with its sidewalks and pavements, made precisely to accommodate not only the peoples of... Siktivkar, but also to compensate for its population growth. Everyone in Siktivkar could get from one point to another in less than an hour's t travel. He put the tip of his pen under the drawing board. Others in the National Assembly had mocked him before. The lines on two streets intersected. He reached out to his eraser, finding it in his pocket after a few moments of frantic searching. He erased the obstacle, rearranging them to bear each other's weight, one incoming, one oncoming. This proposal might not get anywhere considering the political nature of the Republic, but the work was its own reward. Now onto the sidewalk, and onto the pavement, as he drew in his lines and dotted in points along the sides of them. Streetlights. All of this done, Shaverovich, Shafarvich, decided to test his creation. The walk from his home to the National Assembly was 15 minutes. He picked up his pencil again, tracing it along the new route, and his head, his mind ticked. Two meters a second, average walking speed, nine, ten, ten minutes. Now for the next step, much property destruction would be involved in the realization of this plan, and he laid the original design on top of his. Picking out his notebook, he began to count. Sufficient measures. War planning, eh, really to build it on like that. We're going to continue suppressing the left until they're pretty much non-insignificant, we'll say. So, nothing up there. Cool. Come on. We got some loot. Hey, we got some loot. Two loot. Now, usually with this, what I find that would be pretty helpful is you do new industrial equipment, because equipment is pretty good. I prefer that over new workers, which improves your industrial expertise. So, equipment's pretty good. Agricultural methods is pretty good. And research facilities, and then schools, and then new workers. So, I'm going to go with this one. Equipment is so good. Like, I really, really like equipment. If you come down here, you can see equipment power tools. We have currently this one. If we go up here, you get more research speed, more uh, resource efficiency gain, and get more output, which is really, really necessary. This one, expertise. We're currently on nascent industrial base, so down here, you get more cap retention and gain. It's not bad. I mean, if you get buffs, it's always good, but those are okay. And then research speed. Currently, we're on outdated stuff, research facilities. We get actually lose some political power first and get more research speed. Research speed is not bad. Militarizing academia, cutting edge research facilities is not bad. Academic base is not bad to do. We're on basic literacy, so if we go down here, we get some more research speed, factory output, which is not bad. But agricultural mechanization, we're currently on basic ones. You want to go mass mechanization because you get more recruitable population factor. You get more output. You get more output for both actually factories and dockyards. You get more consumer goods. You get less division training time. You get more monthly population. So that's actually really good as well. But the regent, a cold wind blew through the creaking old church, sending candlelight dancing across the face of the Theotokos set high upon the altar. Her eyes and those of her children stared down at the supplicant kneeling before them, and its lips constantly moving in quiet prayer. O oh, heavenly king, the comforter, the spirit of truth, who art everywhere and fillest all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us and cleanse us from every impurity and save our souls, O oh, good one. Sergei Taborutsky paused and shivered as a frigid draught swept over him. Its by sending chills to his old bones. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. And repeat ad nauseum, the cold pressed in, piercing the immaculate old Cyrus uniform he wore. Its golden collar felt like a manacle of frozen iron around his neck, and the fine silk lining did nothing to shield him from the winter's bite. He grimaced, gritted his teeth, and opened his eyes, lifting his head to stare directly into the eyes of the Blessed Virgin. In response, he felt the flame of faith roar to life inside him again, driving the cold from his body. He gasped at the sudden intensity of its heat, but stayed perfectly still. There was a presence behind him, a pair of reassuring hands on his shoulder, gentle whispers in his ears, moisture gathering in his eyes, and he closed them again, recognizing the familiar sensation for what it was. Oh, keep him safe, O oh Lord, he muttered, speaking directly to the presence. Watch over our blessed sovereign. Return the Tsarevich to us. When the time comes, give me the strength to carry out my sacred task to defeat your enemies to restore this land to what it should be. I beg you, stand with me, O oh Lord, and help me save Holy Russia. God save Russia. 
Oh boy, I can't wait. I really can't wait. I've been looking forward to this campaign for a long time. Oh, oh, political power? Don't mind if we do. And let's see if they actually... Let's initiate the raid. They might say no. They might say yes. Hopefully they say no. Every of Reese's executive car. Show 357. We welcome you back to another special segment. Today, we have a very special guest. Please give a warm welcome to John Ryan. That's right, an American. Thanks, Sergey. Glad to be on the show. The pleasure's ours, John. Now, our listeners are very interested in how you got to a very fun republic. Care to share? Well, I was actually with the CIA as far as back as the war. And what was that? Six years ago? Anyway, I decided to stay when they pulled the rest of us out of the front. I quite like this girl named Svetlana. Not one of our Svetlanas, I hope. Oh, God, no. Entirely different girl. If you're listening, babe, I love you. Say hi to... Anastas for me. Back on track now, you said you were with the CIA. Did anything surprise you about the way the front operated? How was life under the Red Giant? You know, for all the credit we give Comrade Zuslav for being some sort of genius, the front was certainly a mess. We all had makings of this tragic tale, generals in fighting, shoddy equipment. We backed the wrong horse in that fight, let me tell you. We should have been there for uh, the Siberians back in the day. Instead, we chose the Reds and suffered for it. An excellent analysis by John Ryan, ex-CIA agent and proud citizen of our Republic. We'll be back in a moment after the break. An interesting perspective. Cool. Good. And they refuse tribute, as expected. Vologda has told us that they reject our offer and are ready for battle. We must be ready our men. We must ready our men to prepare for the fight. Alas, bloodshed is sometimes unavoidable, and we must prepare for what is to come. If they're going to cooperate, it is time we take the loot from Vologda by force. The sounds of gunfire continue to resonate in the Russia, which I am confident with a hundred war score already, they will probably do okay. Especially if we get our IFVs in the battle. Main Zhang has defeated them. Cool. Yep, nothing else here. That's fine. We're already half an hour in. And it's only March. <sighs> TNO. Woo! And the last year of the V. Speak with Stalina? Paramilitaries report. Let's go with Stalina. This is Svetlana Stalina. The daughter of the famous Soviet bureaucrat Yosef Stalin is one of our most valuable assets in crafting effective means of keeping radicalism down. Her plans, though often ruthless in prioritizing effectiveness, are generally excellent and proven a good foil to our rival's constant scheming, her keeping her loyalty and opening up a party to more of her influence. It's considered by many to be a critical part of keeping our hegemony. Despite several of the more principled Democrats' complaints about her alleged authoritarianism, approaching her can surely only help us. And the raid? was successful. Our reports have returned our men hurry home with trucks filled with loot and blood smeared over their hands. They congratulate each other for the successful raid against an unsuspecting enemy, petting the comrades on the back and taking the last few shots at the survivors scurrying away. We proclaim victory in the skirmish as our men cheer and whistle in the hysteria of war, eager to present to us the treasures they've prized from the grips of our adversaries. Beautiful. The party's composition, one inevitability of Comey's politics is that the status quo will change radically at a moment's notice. The sadness of the factor, however, is that at the moment, the status quo seems to be shifting radically away from the ruling faction. Like it or not, by simple virtue of being the public face of the democratic faction in the Republic, public support is eroded by scandal after scandal, but be they real or constructed by political enemies, public support, ever fleeting and ephemeral, has, as of late, been shifting either to the Suslovit extreme left or the more moderate liberal and conservative factions, those of our coalition partners. As our coalition seems to undergo a period of self restructuring. It is critical to ensure that political capital is more or less maintained by the ruling party and that the current president isn't challenged too heavily by our own allies. Whether the solution to this is limiting our more credible, most credible coalition partner, or simply standing by and letting our power shrivel away, is entirely up to the whims of the president. Sorry, Alexei. We need to accept the other factions. Decreases the influence, less social democracy, more liberal democracy. Whatever lowers our acceptance, so we need to accept the other factions. Good. Lower the influence of the social democrats for now. Because eventually, someday, they're not going to be here. Treasure! Our men have crushed the enemy and uprooted from the land everything of use to our raiding parties. In the chaos and hysteria of the violence, some of our men have smashed through the locks of a warehouse and stumbled upon great treasures beyond our wildest dreams. Scrounging up the gold, precious metals, statues, and other remnants of the Russia's past, dragging these relics home brings us immense wealth, prestige, and nostalgia for a great time. Perhaps even this in the violence and brutality of the skirmishes is a sign of great times to come for our people, a relic of the past. Uh, and I'll let you know that we read through some of these things that are going to happen again and again and again. What we're going to do eventually is... I'm not going to read them. We'll just click on them because there's no point to reading them again. Train our troops. I do want to invest in this, though. I want to get more factories. So the industrial investments actually might be worth it right now. Because anything else, it seems okay. Even though we could use more manpower. Is there any way to get more manpower right now? Research speed. That's okay. 1,000 manpower for 75. Or... We get 2,500 for 30. Technically, the other one, I think, is a little better. But he do get more war support. And he does be he is able to call in more stuff. And I really don't care how our current leader is going. This is only 30. More war support and manpower. 
Ah, screw it, we'll do it, why not? Haste and harmony recruitment, that's fine. Because we still need to suppress the left. And you know what, maybe we'll do this one too, anyways. Train our troops. It's only a thousand manpower, though. That's really bad. I want to do this one. Industrial investments. And as soon as I do that, we can suppress the left some more. There's a faction, political faction, significant, which will go down. The right needs to be empowered, which is a little lower. And the center is the most popular faction for now. Oh, well. Form coalition tickets. What's that one? Oh, that's up here. That's right. That's right. Decreases influence of the Comey right. Ah, we good. We are quite good. We have 15, 14 days left for that. And not too long for that as well. Good. Oh, yeah, and we have this guy. They're all in one group. It doesn't really matter. That's fine. Just in case, I'll put you back over here. I think everyone's going to try to beat up the Order of St. George, but that's fine with me. We can purchase some equipment too, but we good. We we pretty good. Ah, look at that manpower. Looking a little better. A little better. Not great. Not, not that much better. But a little better. And we'll do our paramilitary reports. Straight from our paramilitary commander, Petro Grigorenko, comes the latest observations of the eyes of the streets. The previous reports have not given us much confidence in our abilities to control them or control the ever so important avenues and roadways of the Komi Republic. And this report is no different. More and more, the paramilitary used. Oh, assassination attempt. Is that new? God was fond of the keenest day. The paramilitary is under the control of the Suslov and Gumil Gumil Gumilov. March onto the streets, controlling warehouses, voting stations, and even entire neighborhoods of a sick ticket for a car. While our forces falter and shrivel in both the control of democratic aligned districts and the ability to defend what we have left. We must do something about this now, before the citizen of Komi cannot turn his or her eye without seeing radicals damaging our democracy. Well, we'll see what happens. A conversation with Stalina. Voznesensky sips at his teeth. It's a little sweet for his taste, but he's always kept a smile hanging as he faces a cool face, Stalina. It's always good to keep a little contrast with conversational partners in any case. Helps with well, the banter. Not that there's much to talk about these days, besides from the endless politics of the Republic. Teacup arrangements as the storm of Russia rages on around them. Do you miss the old days then, Svetlana? Before he's quite ready, the words leave his mouth to his mild regret. Stalina's face stays closed. She looks at her tea, a twitch flicking across her otherwise controlled features. I wouldn't say so, no. The past is a different time. Different, but rosier than the present. I certainly won't miss days of fighting over bills when this is all over. Oh, Nikolai. This isn't fighting. This is just my father used to call it war without war. And look where we've gotten this republic by fighting this hard. And how far we've come. If this is how democracy works, then I'll stick by it. Stalina smiles, almost wolfish. And I know you, you old fox. You like it here as much as I do. You die without the next bill to argue down or push up. Or to push up. Mr. President V laughs back at her. You truly know, do know me. Perhaps I still have underestimated you, uh, hmm, Stalina. Yes, perhaps there is health left in this place. Even if this old fox dies, Comey will struggle to breathe. Hot tea, warm words. Hey, stability. Nice. And next we will suppress the left until we can loot for more stuff, or scavenge for loot, we should really say. Actually, what was that other one? Coalition tickets, encourage file sharing. Radio Free, Sick Tiff Car, Show 9397. Another day in our fine republic, and that's Alina with today's weather. Now something has come to my attention that I think deserves some dialogue, and this is really serious, don't get us wrong. Thanks, Igor. Now we have scattered reports and photographs. Actually, someone dropped off a packet in our anonymous tips box. The government's actually reactivated the gulags and us Kulom to house excess political prisoners for now for our listeners as we investigate the further story further you may want to stay on the lookout and make sure your house is free of microphones since if the government is really going back to Bukharin who knows what's really up now for those skeptical Sergey how do we know this what does our investig investigatory process look like how do we determine what to cover always a good question radio free Siktiv card believes in transparency which is more than most can say now what we do what we do to start off is mostly rely on anonymous tips the boxes that 205 Internacional Naya, look for the red box with our logo. Photos included are always a plus, especially clear ones when we can see what's happening. That's how we exposed the thing with the president and that young lady last month. Which lady was that? I lost track. Ah, so have I. Anyway, we get photos and we send our own guy around to do some investigative journalism. Thanks to Mr. Poremsky and his Petersburg's engineers, by the way, without him providing security, we wouldn't be able to keep our reporters safe. Now onto how evidence has recovered and how we look for our photo editing. Could it even be true? Could it ever be true? Of course it could be true. Of course. Absolutely. No no loot, no loot. None of them will loot. Big sadness. I just want to loot their bodies. That's what they're there for, right? And... Boom. Suppressing the left once again. 57. And improved computing machines are very nice. Cool. Advanced computing machines. Even more research speed. That'd be quite bueno. Ah, oh, very good, very good, very good. Hey, look at that poverty rate. 
50 to 80% live in poverty. Oh my goodness, that is so bad. Nascent nice industrial base, we gotta definitely pump those numbers up. It is my goal here with all this stuff to at least get one in each category done before we actually move on to the next stage. So we'll see what happens. We'll definitely see what happens. Sock battle of oh my goodness, that's not looking good. Anti-tank, huh? Well, we might as well throw that on now, right? Get some anti-tank. We got all right, well, support equipment. Do we have support equipment? We do not. We need some support equipment. Do we have motorized? The Mongolian Civil War. Cool. Let's grab some motorized. We'll probably need that eventually. Mm, put two on guns, though. That's probably pretty important. Guns to the anti-air. We might use anti-air later on. And fighters and casts. Not transports. Not inter interceptors. Yeah, all stuff can go bye-bye. Go with the government and check. Nothing in our government has been spared from danger in one way or another. While we have essentially twiddled our thumbs, both the left and the right have plotted, calculated, and made their moves with no counterattack from us. We are essentially a king with two rooks flanking it. There are currently only a few moves we are allowed to make, and we must make the right one. The last mistake is made, and our game is over. The plans to keep the flame of democracy alive and coming must be observed and changed with haste. The fate of the Republic depends on it. We lose stability and decreases the influence of the center, which is totally okay with me, but we have direct action. The house burns behind them, as all houses do in time. Screams are cut short by the bark or of gunfire. Mercifully swift. A gunman rushes to the side of the acrid smokestack that pours in from the gaping hole in the house's remains. Those with a little more composure hold the sobbing or sobbing townsfolk and the screaming widow away from the scene. If she wasn't a widow before, she is certainly a widow now. Officer Popov takes a whiff of this cigarette, hacking as his fingers tremble. He's waiting for someone, and that someone is late. Lateness is not a quality. The Vosnes. Vosnesen Sky Bridge irregular approaches. As the distant screams recede, his acquaintance swims into view, grabbing irritably at the dust on his lapels. Commander Kostelov makes his way to the burning frontage. He kicks aside a brick, nods briskly, and the two are down to business. There is little to discuss, Popov. The commander glares into the distance, pointing southeast of the duel's position. You shoot the two men here, we kill a couple more. We'll do the same this time next week. Not what I was talking about. We're hitting those effing bullshies in our own neighborhoods, so what about the others? Popov is venomous, his searing gaze directed towards all of communism, or perhaps it is focused on Kostlov. We we need to spread out. This does nothing for the health of the Republic. Kostlov brushes his ragged beard. His men will gladly go where there's game to be had, but his control is thin enough in this district as it is. Is it worth the expenditure? Will the petty masters in the parliament be happy? He shrugs. It will, in the end, be him who decides, not some waist-suited corpse. Democracy is built on the ground in Comey, even when it is bit or built bullet by bullet. Expand operations. Decrease the influence of the left and the right, or stay where we are. Increase his influence. Mm. How much influence does the center have? Oh, we can scavenge for loot too. The center has 65. We're gonna we're gonna lower that. Increases. Uh, I don't want to decrease my influence, but I'm gonna get loot first. There we go. See where we are. Oh, we can. Ooh, if we suppress the right, increases that. Let's decrease the left. Oh, we actually lose manpower. That's what's up. Yeah, we're going to decrease the left first, just because we can. And if we do the center, that just means it might be a little bit more difficult for us to... ...get more support on the right. My mind just stopped there. And we'll read one more focus before we end this episode. Because we're already past 40 minutes. Holy cow. I just want to make everyone less po poor. Not less poverty, but less poor. Come on, just let, just let me beat them. I just, I just want to beat these guys up. You know what? Let me let me fight them. Don't even refuse a tribute. Please refuse a tribute because I don't want to lose men or manpower. Come. Oh, actually, I I don't mind losing it, so we get some benefits. So something tells me we'll probably win against one division. So I could be wrong, especially when they can't pierce us. But 95, a successful raid. The spoils of war. New schools. We're gonna go with agricultural methods next. Spoilers of war, please. Ah, oh, there we go. If you want to read about this, go right ahead. This happens every time the balance of power is clearly shifted in our favor, and with each skirmish to come, we're better armed to tackle these challenges that encroach across all the wild Russian frontiers. This will help in the future. Awesome. We actually got rifles. That's why I wanted to do this. Get more rifles, get stability, war support, great stuff, and children to play. Koltsov was returning from work when he noticed a small group of children, no more than 15 or 16 members, making little noises with their mouths and making hand pistols and replicating the kickball that came with such pieces of weaponry. In the midst of the fake battle, he could clear a, hear a little boy yelling, I am Delvenga, and I am going to kill you all. Die, Delvenga, die, screamed in response, heartily laughing as he charged with gun fingers banging off wildly. The scene sent a shiver down Koltsov's spine as he heard the German fiend's man, the butcher and rapist of innocence. He remembered when he was younger, and the stories of Delvanga were used to terrify him. Now these children were playing 
him like he was some sort of villain and not a monster. Cold Saw thought about how his son would react to such games. Would he know that the Dovanga of stereotypical evil? Were he still a young girl so a brave man could save her? Or would he know the monster who raped girls and killed children in the crib when they cried for their mothers? Regardless, he would make sure that the Assembly knew about the impact the violence and the Republic was having on the young of this nation. A letter will surely solve the issue. What? Delvanga doing bad things? No. What? No. That, um, mm. What? N never, right? Oh, God. Hey, look. viatka has got a little bit of that sweet loot. I wonder if they don't mind sharing with us. And who's the field marshal? You know, it doesn't matter at all. You are. Hmm. And you'll be led by that guy. And the government in check. In which tomorrow we shall begin and keep going down. But let me... I want to ask you this question. We're going to do the 1962 budget for now. And I'll ask you one question. The 1962 budget of the Republic is a critical document providing a comprehensive list of appropriations for each and every program administered by the co government of Comey. However, even with the ruling coalition's dominance of the National Assembly, its passage is not entirely guaranteed. Historically, compromise has been necessary to pass budgets as every party within the coalition has different ideas on what should be funded. The budget thusly has become an ex exercise in pork barrel spending, with deputies given appropriations for each for pet projects to keep them loyal with increasing in popularity of the President V. However, the National Assembly could possibly not be quelled by the usual tricks. Numerous advisors and his allies to the President have hinted to him that the usual methods of getting the government on his side would be much less effective during this term. And additional means may be necessary to ensure that the Republic gets what it needs in terms of funding. So here's my question to you. Should we go do these other five focuses or beeline down this path to get to the interlude? I want to know your thoughts below. Do you want to rush down and get Mr. Tabby, Mr. Sage, Mr. Monicus as fast as possible or not? Let me know in the comments below, but regardless, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we expand Comey, hopefully, and continue to raid our enemies. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day!